All right, everybody, welcome to another Top 5 Countdown. Now, tonight, I am joined by Chris Kirkman of Dice Hate Me Games, and him and I had a very, <laughs> representing, very <laughs> much so, um, we recently had a, a Quiver giveaway contest, and Chris and I are huge, huge fans of a Quiver, as sitting right oh, yes. here. Yeah, I mean, how many do you have, sir? Well, I only have the one, but I'm ordering a second one because this is for my personal collection, but okay. I use it so much that I'm going to another one for a playtest. So okay. there's plenty of games that I have enough that I can fit a playtest version in that, and I can just strap them both on my back and go. Yeah. Right? It's like you, you get total like Donatello with both on each side, <laughs> and, you know, I have one. This is actually my wife's um, for when we were at Origins. Um, we have two... I, I'm considering picking up a third one because, like we talked about, I want to make a bar, a portable bar yes. in one of these. I, and I'm tempted to get a third one just for that reason, too, because <laughs> that would be fantastic. But, yeah. So uh, a quick little hint. Uh, prices are about to go up on these, so yes. you might want to act sooner get in rather now. than now. That's yes. right. Yes. Um, yep. High quality, though. But enough. This really, I swear to God, this is not a Quiver commercial. Um, this is just, in search just <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Right. And in searching for things to come up with for a top five list, we decided what are our top five Quiver-worthy games. So now I have several on my list, and Chris has some on his list. Um, and briefly, we'll discuss our criteria because for me, I mean, obviously, criteria number one, they have to fit in this case, okay? And, you know, like this could take my entire Cards Against Humanity collection, but that's, that's really not what this is about. This is about, <laughs> like, I want a dozen games in here, right? Oh, absolutely. I've got a ton in mind, that's for sure. Yeah. And you can get creative with it, too. Yeah. Absolutely. And guess what, people? doesn't have to be a card game um you know i have actually gone as far as um and i should have brought some down i apologize i have small deck boxes and like you can shove some dice and things and then you just have the deck boxes and label them up nice and easy so we're, we're we're not just restricting this to card games they have to fit in the case for me um they have to be something that obviously i've played several times and i like these aren't like my top five party games, but these are games I want with me at a con when I'm generally gonna have this, or if I'm going out real quick to a friend's house or a game night, I always just quickly grab the quiver so I have a dozen options at my ready. What were your criteria? Uh, my criteria is the same. It, it literally does have to fit in the quiver. And uh, again, you can get creative with it because the quiver not only has, well, I guess I can kind of show if somebody doesn't know what a quiver looks like, but oh, inside excellent. the quiver, you can see tons of space over the top and the bottom. You can fit pins, you can fit dice. I got dice here on the end. Um, it has to all fit inside the quiver. Um, and for tonight's top five, I guess, list, um, I'm not going to cr to include any dice hate me or greater than game properties in, in, the, in the quiver, even though there are plenty Trust me, plenty that will fit inside the quiver. Every single rabbit ever made, at least. Um... Absolutely. Most <laughs> monkeys. Uh, signals of the multiverse from Greater Than Games will fit all in there. Well, I, I think you need a, a co-branded Sentinels of the <laughs> Multiverse case, you know, yes. down the road. a lot of cards. But if you really are big fans of Sentinels, you can put them all in there. But anyway, we're not going to count all those down, but if you want some cool... Uh, quiver worthy products you can always check out our stuff so. absolutely um i will make a note that i did not adhere to that standard because hey, hey i don't have a dog in the race so it's okay <laughs> i'm cool with that <laughs> <laughs> so the guest always gets to choose who goes first because do you want to be the guy who comes out and says this is the first or do you want to be the last one to announce your number one so i will let you choose who goes oh, first man you know what i'm gonna let you go first it's your show and you should go first absolutely so all right so coming in at number five for me um is it's solely cards uh it's two rooms and a boom because chances are if i'm walking around with a quiver 
uh, it's at a convention, and there's a good chance I'm going to have a dozen people, and no game plays 10 to 14, 16 people as good as Two Rooms in a Boom um, by Tuesday Night Games. I love it. It's all cards, and honestly, small package, because it's maybe, oh, yeah. you know, you can put a base set in there, and it can be less than a deck of cards. So my number five, Two Rooms in a Boom. And your sir. It's a great selection. Yeah. It's a great selection because you want to have something that's. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit. Of, I mean, we're going to talk mostly about our top fives, but there are some adjacencies and things like that. I used to have the resistance in my quiver. Uh, okay. Back. And, and the thing about a quiver is you kind of rotate through sometimes, depending you on do. what your group likes to play or do some things. And I think having a good social game is really good for that. Uh, for me, a, a social game that's inside my quiver and something that people can think about is the, the oink. Uh, oh. games line yes uh they, they're tiny boxes but they also fit sideways in your your quiver and this one happens to be a fake artist goes to new york which i think is uh number five on my list. as far as something you can play with a large group uh, again it's a, a game that you kind of uh you have a clue and somebody's trying to give that clue or actually the clue goes around the table and you all draw like just one little line on this piece of paper and you're trying to get we're not the, the quote unquote traitor, the fake artist, um, uh, to, to guess what the, the actual uh, art piece is. But then the fake artist is trying to not out themselves because they don't know what the clue is. It's a great game. It's a great group game. And also, all the Oint games, this just happens to be the one that I have in mind. Uh, there's a tons of Oint games that are in the same box size, and I think they're great for a quiver. Yeah, they pack so much into that small box. They really do. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, and you know, yeah, no, I, I love their products. Excellent, excellent. I totally, heartily agree. So, for my number four, I went full on party, um, and I always have happy salmon in my quiver. <laughs> I really do. Now, I mean, let's be honest. I could use the little D ring, and I could clip it on the side, and it could I could have a fish hanging off the side of my quiver just as easily. But nothing to me gets blood pumping, gets people moving. Um, I, I now mix in some funky chicken or both happy salmons. Yep. But to me, that is just the get up, move, have fun, and be stupid game. And love it to death. So it, it's lived in my quiver since I got it. It's insane, and it's it's the only game that I've ever played where we got ejected from a game room. Yes, <laughs> I believe that. Yep. yep. And and they, point here. Here's a pro tip: um, do not play this on an air hockey table um, <laughs> <laughs> unless you actually lock off the gates where the pucks go. Although it is kind of fun to run the air hockey table while you're throwing cards and down in the front. the cards. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. But yeah, we we kind of lost a few in the uh, the the puck return, and it was not pretty. <laughs> They're all recovered. All recovered. <laughs> Fair enough. And your number four, sir. My number four is a game which uh, I'll hold it up really. Well, actually, I don't have a card that shows. It. Anyway, Rocky Road a la mode. Okay. Which. Um, uh, Green Couch Games produces a lot of small box games, and they're they're fantastic. Jason Katarski, actually, who designed the Great Heart of the Hall Company, it was his first mm -hmm. published game under us for Dice Me Games. Right. Um, he started a company, and, and a lot of his games, Outlaw has been in my quiver for a while, and it got rotated out. He's got some other really great titles. But right now, Rocky Road All Mode, which is designed by Josh Mills, is a really fun uh, game where you're kind of building engines of uh, you know the, your trucks and you're trying to fulfill these um, ice cream contracts that the, the customers want and so as you build out them really quickly your engine builds super fast so the game only lasts 15 to 20 minutes right uh, but it has a lot of gameplay in it and very cool components very easy to put into your quiver it's got a deck of cards but also has a, you know, a few little meeples little ice cream truck meeples that you use to run around the board and uh uh, just a great, uh, great game to put in your quiver. Oh, that sounds, you know, I've, I've yet to play it. I love ice cream, so it's kind of, I don't know why I've yet to play it. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you why. There's just too many games, right? There's so many games. Yeah, so absolutely. many games. That's why um, we do these, these, these podcasts. Yeah. Because we want to tell people all the games, yeah. Absolutely. And I totally agree. Now, now this, this is not me pandering at all any way <laughs> shape or form 
Uh, my number three is Brew Crafters, the travel card game. Um, now, I'll be honest with you, for me, I, I love Brew Crafters and it doesn't make it out enough in my group because my group's like, oh, I'd rather play Agricola or I'd rather, or it's, you know, I, they, they have these hangups. They're also not beer drinkers, but I love when I get this game out. And the travel card game really kind of allows me to get it out twice as often, honestly, mm -hmm. because it really gives you about a third of the feel of the big game in, in a third of the time. And I really Absolutely. love that. Well, I'm glad that you put that in there. I, I obviously could not include it on my list, but it is one that I do carry around quite often in my quiver when I swap things in and out. Um, in this, we, we didn't plan this at all. Everybody out nope. there watching right now, we did not plan this at all. <laughs> but the synergy the synergy is that home brewers, which okay. is the, uh, the, the rooster version, which is the, the uh, medium box game that we use for Dice Hate Me products, the, is between uh, Brewcrafters and uh, Brewcrafters Travel Card Game is actually launched on a Kickstarter on September 18th. And the card game that, that was just mentioned uh, is actually being rebranded and also updated as Microbrewers. Okay. So you'll be able to find that in retail, but both on uh, Kickstarter and then later in retail uh, as a rabbit game, which is actually going to have some slight tweaks to gameplay okay. uh, from the original version. And so Anyway, I'm just throwing that out there. If you want to check out Even better. On September 18th, there you go. <laughs> but it's a great game. It's so it's fun. It plays literally in, in 15 to 20 minutes uh, early, but 20 to 30 rather. But yeah. But I love it. It it has it's one of those that has all the same art, all the same color, and the same aesthetic. And I think that that's important when you kind of, you know, you make that quicker, lighter play filler version. Awesome. Yep. Agreed. All right, sir. All right, moving so on to your number three. My number three, and you came prepared, these. and you brought these out. I did. I got my quiver, <laughs> so you can see. Well, actually, this is like a legit this. list. Mine's upstairs. <laughs> this is the empty one. Uh, I'm going to throw this. This I don't know if anybody can see what I'm holding up, but anyway, it's uh, this is Peep Mots. Okay. So P I E P M A T Z, and you're going to hear these designers' names come up again, but this is. Uh, Matt Riddle and Ben Pinchback, who are the designers of uh, many, Fleet. many, many games. Fleet. Morocco. Uh, Morocco. Uh, uh, Wasteland Express Delivery Service. Uh, our yes. very own Legends of Sleepy Hollow, which is uh, hopefully, my God, I hope that we're done producing that soon. It's been just an amazing <laughs> game to produce, but it's so much work. But anyway, Pete Motts is awesome. And if anybody can see, it's all about bird watching, essentially. And, okay. Um, it's... Uh, it's hard to describe. It's not. It's it's pseudo trick taking, uh, set collection type of game. But there's a perch and there's these different birds that sit around the perch, and you're trying okay. to play cards from your hand to lure the lure these birds into your collection. And if you're able to um, basically dominate the number of sets of birds in your collection, then you at the end of the game you'll win those points, which are designated by the eggs that are on the bottom of the thing. And there's also eggs that you can get from the actual uh, uh perch itself which you know kind of moves up uh, above the perch in, in addition to to uh the birds that are surrounding it there's also crows and squirrels who are going to ruin your collection of course they're going to get rid of eggs or scare away some <laughs> of the birds of course because if you got a bird feeder they're just always they're the worst around. they're the they worst they are the worst absolutely uh, the, the art in the game is gorgeous uh it's great to pull out and play for um, I guess if you um, are familiar with Arboretum or Parade, right. uh, this is a card game that fits in that same wheelhouse. But I, in my opinion, I think that it actually surpasses both of them, and and it's it's just fantastic. Awesome. I I've yet to try that one. I'm not a trick taking fan, so I tend to run it's away from games like that. But it's not quite trick taking. It's more um, kind of playing what you can out of your hand to uh, uh, get what you can from around the bird feeder. So it's, okay. it's not as much as a head-to-head-to-head-to-head a, a head -to -head -to -head trick-taking mm -hmm. uh, thing as much as this select collection and hand management, which okay. is it's great. Yeah. Sounds good. I'll have to give that a try, like next time we hang out. Absolutely. Because I know you'll have it on you. I will. <laughs> it'll be in my quiver. <laughs> awesome. So my number two... Um, it could be many games, um, but ultimately the version that lives in my quiver is Matainai. Because um, oh, yeah. 
I do love the glory to Rome system. I mean, you could pop in import export here. Um, not the dinosaur one, not a fan, little cards, you know, you can keep that one. Um, but Motai and I, I can get both the decks in. Um, I've yet to play with the expansion. I'm curious to see how it goes. And you can actually fit the player cards in the lid pretty nicely. Mm -hmm. So um, you can get it out and you can bring it to events and then spend the next hour teaching somebody how to play it. It's great. Um, but probably one of my favorite Carl Chuddicks, I mean, even to a point like Red 7 made the top 20 list and things like that because I just I love these multi-use rule changing kind of games that he he built. I I totally love them. Oh, he's a great designer and and uh Motana is is great. I mean, I I'll be honest with you. I like Glory Realm better, but it's not as portable. Right. It's a little, it's uh, a bigger deck for sure. It's a bigger Three deck times. and and the actual player boards are a little thicker than you can put into to the quiver comfortably. At right. least the black box version which is the one that I own and play a lot. But, you know, yeah, fantastic choice. Awesome. And your number two, sir. My number two is a little unorthodox. Um, but We, it's we appreciate can... that. <laughs> <laughs> one that you can fit into your quiver, and that is Gone Sean Cleaver. Oh, how very trendy yeah. and up-to-date of you. <laughs> exactly. And I see uh, it's and laminated, no less. It is laminated, <laughs> so I can use it over so I not only can fit these sheets, but I have some, uh, uh, you know, dry erase markers in there, and I also have the custom, some custom dice that you can fit in nice. your quiver as well. So lots of different uh, variability for the quiver itself. But Gonshan Cleaver is is great to to break out. It's a roll and write, and it was obviously it was a uh, Spiel nominated, Spiel de Jars nominated, and um, just it's just fun to play. The the app on the phone I play all the time, and I, I break yeah. this out and teach the people really quickly. I think it's a, a, a just a great design and very easy to fit. Uh, as, again, as a more unconventional quiver selection that's not all cards um, that you can fit right into the uh, little uh, meshed net portion at the top of the lid. Right. Excellent. So, so that we now come to our number ones, um, and my number one kind of falls in that kind of unconventional. Um, but for me, a quiver is being ready to go with any crowd at any time, and nothing says that to me more than having skull. Oh, I skull. I have the skull, great. and I have the skull coasters in there, and it's probably the simplest game. And you don't even need the coasters. You can make it at a bar if you had to. I mean, you'd, you'd have a lot of coasters being used, but there's I <laughs> I, I love the frenetic nature of it. Um, you know, the mind kind of kind of comes into play here, too, a little bit, as it's this whole kind of quiet people playing off each other kind of vibe going on. And it's kind of creeping up there for me, but Skull just is always that, you know, we could sit down, we can have a drink, and we could play a game. I can sit on the floor at a con. It just kind of, you know, the teach is literally, if it's a minute, I'm twice as long as I should be. Um, and it's it's just fun it's it's one of those let's just great. do it and play it right yep and the version i have is the old skull and roses oh. which was the original one it has fantastic and both of them have fantastic art yeah but yeah it's great to be able to break out the coasters and play this kind of like deduction game especially it's a perfect bar game my uh i i have my friend victor he actually went and bought coasters like from beer companies online and he made a custom kit that is completely bonkers before the reprint actually came out um but no i totally it's it it helped me get into party gaming like hobby party gaming as it were absolutely and yeah. and love it to death so i'm dying to know what your number one is because i'm, I'm well, kind of here's the thing porn so um <laughs> either i need to or we need to have one honorable mention because I can't leave out either of these games. Okay. But I'm going to go ahead. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to throw this up as my number one, but I am literally going to cheat a little bit and do an honorable mention here in a second. But my okay. number one is fleet. Okay. So this is uh, probably one of my favorite games of all time. This is again by Matt Riddle and Ben Pinchback. They make a lot of quiver worthy games. They do. Uh, this is, this is one of the contract cards uh, from from the game itself, which you have to put in kind of either in the, in the lid or, or sideways, which I have mine tucked in sideways. Because they're um, slightly they have... larger. They're that yeah, tarot that, size. Yeah. 
Exactly, and the, the regular cards are regular card size, obviously. Uh, you can play those different things. I actually have uh, the entire fleet collection, both fleet uh, and a fleet Arctic Bounty, which is the expansion, completely in my quiver here, along with all the, the contract cards and, and so on and so forth inside my quiver. Uh, again, it's an, it's an, uh, it has a little bit of a bidding mechanic, but also an engine building mechanic, and uh, you're fishing in in the uh pacific or well i guess it's more the arctic they have the 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 arctic bounty and then they also have uh round you gotta get the it. crab you gotta get the crab involved you got, well you gotta get all <laughs> kinds of things it's like the only it, there's so many it's like chess there's like everybody has a gambit in this game and it's it's awesome so whether you want to try to get the shrimp license or you want to go for you know the, how about whatever it's 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 fantastic um it's it's just such a fun game and, and depending on how much you mix and match the uh the, the different um, licenses that you put in whether you're playing with the expansion or not I, I just love it and i never get tired of teaching it to people and of course i've i've championed it since it came out and i think it was the if i recall correctly 2012 dice Hitman game of the year so if i didn't have it in my quiver i would be reticent so. yeah and i think i i actually had um tc sign for me his captain oh, card oh his captain card yeah, <laughs> yes. so I, I think I need to, I, you are one of the captains if I'm not mistaken, so I think I need next time, I need to pack that with me in my quiver so that I can get you to sign <laughs> that one because sure, I'd be glad to. you need to complete the set, but no, I totally agree, Fleet is, oh, I love it, there's, there's so much game in that box as far as, the, and if you like a good engine builder, it it doesn't feel like it's just a card game by any means because oh, there's right. so it's much going on. It's got a on. lot of meat. There's so much meat to the game. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's a problem with a lot of card games. They kind of get pigeonholed in this, oh, it's a card game. It can't be, or it doesn't have a board, you know, like Great Heartland Hauling Company you mentioned. And I think a lot of games suffer for that, but it's, no, there's so much more here. So I agree, and excellent. well, also Motenai that you brought up is more than a card game. I mean, there, there's a lot of these things that are more than card games yeah. because they just bring more to the to the meat of, of the actual gameplay itself. Now, will you allow me to cheat for my honorable mention? So yeah, so so give me some honorable mentions or some things that were were really close to the cusp or, or had you had you holding your breath. So this one, this is the the old version, and there's there's actually two or three different versions that have come out now, but. Um, you may not recognize. I'm not sure if anybody will recognize what the oh, actual that's, card is. Oh, that's no thanks, sir. That's no thanks, exactly. There you go. <laughs> no thanks is one of the, I mean, this is, this. if you want to talk about a grail, like a grail design game, a game right. that is so simple that you wish you had thought of it yourself to be able to make or publish, no thanks is definitely that game. And it is the perfect bar game. It is a game that I've owned for several years and used to, before I had my quiver, I'd put it in my pocket when I was going out to a bar to be able to play right. it with people. And it is basically a pressure luck game. And all you do is a card flips out between one and 33 that has a number on it. And you basically have these chips in your hand. And if you don't want it, you put it on your chip on the table and you say, no, thanks. And so it goes around the table. until simple. Somebody <laughs> takes the card and the chips, the chips are worth negative points at the end. The cards are worth positive points and you can actually string the cards together. So you press your luck to see if you can string the cards together to get lower points that you, which you really, really have. And the person who has the lowest points at the end of the game wins. It's that easy. But it, is. it has so, it's so fantastic. It's just so good. You're right. Because it's got that, it's got that tipping point mechanic in it that you just like, risk versus reward will i be able to finish that or somebody just knows like well you're going to take it eventually and i'm just going to milk it for all it's worth <laughs> just like exactly <laughs> it has those moments where you're just like you're, you're teasing people because also sometimes people can run out of chips and you don't know how many chips they have in their hand because it's hidden and so you're like trying to milk some people around the table and you want to make sure you don't milk too far because somebody might end up taking that card that you actually need or want right and the chips with it yeah because just that they run out of chips it's yeah great. nope any others that were that were really close for you really close for me um yeah okay so tc petty that we mentioned who designed uh we did. Petty the third who who mentioned or who designed uh viva java viva java the uh, coffee game the dice game uh several different things like that oops that's a promo card let's pull up this one uh you can't really t yeah we can see a little bit so spires yeah 
Spires is an interesting game too because it is, and like you said, you're not really into trick taking, but Spires actually is a trick taking sort of game that turns all that on its head. So you've got variable um, uh, uh, trick mechanisms within the mm -hmm. game itself, variable win conditions and cars that come out that if you go above a certain threshold means you can't score that uh, set that you've collected through your tricks and so on and so forth. Right. Uh, great production value, uh, fantastic game. I will. Nah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say it. I'm gonna <laughs> say it I, can't, I can't. I can't say it officially. But anyway, uh, it is a great game. And if you're able to find it, I I, I highly recommend uh, that as well. And one last one that I'll mention as uh, in my quiver that I love. But play. not for five players though, right? <laughs> yeah, well, Xenon Profiteer and Spires are notorious. Xenon Profiteer definitely notorious. Definitely not for five players. Uh, you, did you did, did you talk about that with TC when he was on the program? I, you know, I don't know that we did. <laughs> yeah, they, he loves. I think it came game. up, but I don't think we yeah. actually got into it. Slightly. That's an end joke. Ask if anybody <laughs> out there finds TC Petty. Uh, ask him about Xenon Profiteer and five players. He'll the, love it. the five player expansion. Just ask about <laughs> exactly. It. Yeah. Um, there's also uh, several other card games, but I'm just going to mention one really quick as an honorable mention. Uh, the Button Shy games that would are the little wallet wallet games right uh, are fantastic for the quiver um there are tons of different ones that i've had in my quiver through rotations uh, over and over i am probably sprawlopolis is probably going to make it in there and, and a few others yeah i can't I wait for that one but mint julep is one of my favorites i love horse hmm. racing games okay i just like the the pressure luck of of how you can affect the the race itself and how the cars play out but the overall production value of mint julep if i can just uh, tell but the uh, the art for Mint Julep wow. is just beautiful, and uh, it, again, it's it's what Jason Tagmeyer and Button Shy is able to do with 18 cards, for the designs of, of what they do is just fantastic. So if you it is um, you can go to buttonshy.com, check out a lot of their little wallet games. These are ones that can fit into your pocket. One is always in my car car, which is uh, Cow Tiger Santa, Santa Claus, Claus. <laughs> yep. which again is another Matt Riddle Ben Pinchback design. <laughs> Um, this is the Matt, Middle, Matt Riddle and Ben Pinchback show, but anyway, it kind of is. So I might, really I, is. I might have to get them on just to kind of make up for all the advertising <laughs> we're doing for them. <laughs> you tell the show, and they're they're fantastic to talk to. They're, we we've had them on uh, both State of Games and Geek oh yeah, well. constantly. Yeah. yeah, they're awesome. They're just great. So I only have a, a couple. So we talked about the mind. I, I really enjoy that. Um, you mentioned No Thanks. I like No Thanks. I also like For Sale kind of hits that same. Oh, For Sale's great. It yes. hits that sweet spot for me. Um, really love that. Uh, Crossfire is kind of the big social I deduction. Yeah, I have not had a chance to play Crossfire. I would love to. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, I don't get to play it very often just because, you know, usually... Somebody wants something a little longer term, like a Resistance or a Salem or something that's, you know, got a little more to it than just like a couple quick rounds. But, you know, in a in a bar atmosphere, it's wonderful. So it's great for that. And then last is uh, San Juan. Um, San Juan. Classic. Yeah, it, fantastic. It, if I tell you, I'm so happy it saw a reprint. Um, it's very, very portable. You know, basically it's about two and a half decks worth of cards, a couple mm -hmm. cardboard chits, and, and you have half the field of Puerto Rico ready to go. And you know, I, I love the app. It's one of the early games I played, but, you know, just I think Matai and I kind of scratches the same itch sometimes. It does, and, and uh, Matai and I and Glory to Rome have a little bit of that San Juan blood in yeah. it, you know, with the follow lead me me mechanism. San Juan's a little bit more, I wouldn't say, I mean, the word pure seems a um, little misleading, but it's it's more streamlined. Uh, yeah. San Juan is fantastic. Distilled. Yeah, Distilled. Distilled, yeah. Great. There we go. Great turn. Yes. So that's that's awesome. So that's our our top five, which gives you ten great games because we didn't have one crossover although i think brew crafters would have been had you unshackled yourself um <laughs> true very true games to put in your quiver and you know again not a commercial we just love them although i might throw the commercial at the end of this we'll see um <laughs> i i just it's just a great card case to be able to carry around the cons it's nice it's firm and it's um 
I first heard about it from the Geek All Stars, and you guys talked about it a lot. Oh, great! And um, well, that's I love kind of, to hear that. Yeah, and it's what kind of got me hooked. And I'm like, you know, why don't you know? I think a lot of people see a card case and they think it's oh, that's for Magic the Gathering cards right. and things like that, or you know, oh, you buy the black one and you put all of your cards against humanity in there, and I, you know, it's. It's not. I think when you embrace the quiver lifestyle and, you know, it, this is the tiny house of board games. That's, <laughs> That's what right. this is. This is the tiny trend that tiny house has caused. This is the tiny house of board games. And when you can pack 15 games in a small tube like that, I don't think you can do much better. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And it's going to soon become our tiny bar. It is, it is. I think, so, and that's why I don't yeah. have a black one yet because I think that needs. That's the bar. Yeah. I think Absolutely. The bar yeah. yeah. I think I can fit at least six flasks in there. I think. <laughs> <laughs> at least. Yeah. Exactly. At least. So, well, that might that might explain how we will act the next time we get together at a convention. But <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I appreciate you being on, Chris. People, where can Thanks they find me. you? You can always find me on Twitter at Dice Hate Me. Um, we've, of course, got DiceHateMe.com and GreaterThanGames.com. So you can always check out our products at GreaterThanGames.com and DiceHateMe.com for um, our podcasts like The State of Games and also occasional uh, YouTube reviews, unboxings, things like that. Absolutely. And you can also check Chris out. He did an episode with us uh, a few moons ago uh, that was that was quite enjoyable where we got together and chatted about a lot of stuff. So, you know, you and of course you can find me, well, where you found this. So I, I'm the easy one here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So thank you all for watching. Thank you, Chris, for being on. And for we'll, uh, we'll be back next time with another Top 5 Countdown. Booyah! Maybe Octopus. <laughs>